This is the Classical Ideas Podcast. to the Classical Ideas Podcast, a little housekeeping to start off. I have episodes coming up on Judaism, Jainism, and a special episode about the impact of travel. The episodes will appear in this order. If you like the Classical Ideas Podcast, you can help spread the word by reviewing the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or CastBox. You can also invite your friends to follow this show on Facebook at facebook.com slash classical ideas podcast or following me on Twitter at classical underscore ideas. On to the special episode. Today I'm doing a reading of the creation story in Hinduism. Creation stories are popular with the students that I teach. They love learning about Izanagi and Izanami from Shinto, the first few chapters of Genesis, and they really enjoyed this story about Brahma and Sarasvati from the Hindu religion. Hinduism is the third largest religion with 900 million adherents worldwide. This is 15% of the world's population. Most Hindus are in India, where four out of every five people in the world's largest democracy are Hindu. Hinduism is the majority religion in Nepal. There are millions of Hindus in Bangladesh, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Malaysia, and the United States. I am preparing a Hinduism episode about practices and another full episode about the Bhagavad Gita soon, but seeing as how we are on the cusp of Hindu festival season, we are currently in the midst of a Lord Ganesha festival, I felt inclined to do a special brief episode with a reading of the creation story in Hinduism featuring the god Brahma, the creator, and Sarasvati the goddess of knowledge, art, wisdom, and music. I personally enjoy creation stories. They're a fun way to compare and contrast, stimulate a lively conversation, and help readers to understand some of the core beliefs about some of the foundings of the world's religions. Without further ado, I bring you the story of Brahma and Sarasvati. Before the world, sky, or stars were made, there was darkness. It was everywhere, and it was empty. But for all its emptiness, it was neither dead nor cold. It was warm, damp, and lively, endlessly rippling and eddying throughout the universe. If people had existed and been able to see it, it would have seemed like a giant creature without shape, breathing softly as it slept. And if they had been able to listen, They would have heard its ripples gradually transformation themselves to sound. A word began. At first, it was no more than a whisper, but it swelled and it grew to a billow of a sound, a gentle syllable, endlessly repeating itself, folding back on itself, coiling and twisting till it filled all space. Om. 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 As the word unfolded and spread, calm as a heartbeat, it turned the rippling universe into an endless, unfathomable ocean. Deep in the water bobbed a seated, and as the ocean currents ebbed and flowed, they carried it to the surface to become a golden, glowing egg. The egg rocked on the water, and wave tips reflected its radiance to every corner of the darkness round about. As it rocked, the sacred word, Om, went on cradling it, enfolding the way, rolls 
petals enfold the flower, heart deep inside. The sound was in and out and round about, and inside the eggshell, as long time passed, it formed itself into Brahma, the first father, creator of worlds. When Brahma was ready to be born, he hatched like a chick from the golden egg. From half the shell he made the sky, from the other half he made the earth. He set air between them to keep them apart. The golden sky shell twinkled in the smoke of space like a myriad stars, or like water drops glistening in an upturned bowl. The earth shell bobbed on the sea until Brahma anchored it with rocks and mountain peaks. The air between the shells sometimes took its form from the golden light above and was clear and pure. At other times it gathered dampness from the sea below and blanketed the earth with storms. When the earth was ready, Brahma drew out of himself six elements, thought, hearing, sight, touch, taste, and smell. He blended the elements to make living things of every kind. He sowed the earth with plants and gave them two gifts, the sense of touch and the power to remake themselves with seeds and fruits. He stocked the land with animals and the sea with fish and set the air whirring with birds and insects. And to each of them he gave seven gifts. The sense of touch, taste, hearing, sight, and smell. The power to reproduce themselves and the power of movement. The world throbbed with life as its new creatures squawked, hissed, chattered, buzzed, yelped, whistled, and barked on every side. So Brahma created all living things and gave them gifts. One thing only he kept from them, thought. The world was their playground, and they had senses to enjoy it. Why should they need thought as well? Until the time came when he made a creature worthy of possessing intelligence, Brahma locked it inside himself. Many ages passed, and he spent them roaming the world, delighting in his own creation. Sometimes he rode a white swan, sometimes a peacock. Sometimes he sailed across seas and rivers in a lotus boat. With his four hands, he picked up all kinds of objects and carried them. A pink lotus flower, a string of prayer beads, a scarred book, a golden pot. After a time, Brahma divided himself and made another being, Sarasvati. As soon as she existed, Brahma fell passionately in love with her. He gazed fondly at her, and she lowered her eyes and modestly stepped to one side, out of his gaze. At once a second head appeared on Brahma's neck, gazing at her lovingly as before. She stepped behind him, and a third head grew. She stepped to his other side, and a fourth head grew. She soared into the air above him, and a fifth head grew, looking up. Brahma said, Come down, Sarasvati. Help me make angels to live in light, demons to live in darkness, and the human race to live on earth. Sarasvati swooped back down to earth and married him. They spent their wedding night of a hundred years in a secret cave, and at the end of it, Manu, the first human being, was born. Brahma gave him eight gifts, five senses, the power of movement and reproduction, and the greatest gift of all, the power of intelligent thought. Ever since then, the world has belonged to human beings, insects, birds, and animals. The gods and the angels and demons they created watch over us and help or punish us as we deserve. Brahma's fifth head, the one looking up into the sky, burned away long ago in a fiery state of Shiva, god of destruction. He soars now in the emptiness of space, rides swans or peacocks on earth as before or sits beside Sarasvati on lotuses in quiet streams. She is the goddess of knowledge and of all the arts, especially music. She holds flowers, prayer beads, finger drums, or a palm leaf book. She plays a wire-stringed veena 
and her music fills the world with the sweetness of the gods.